Hi and welcome to Gabriel Aguiar Prod, I'm Gabriel and today we have a very different video. It's not going to be a tutorial about a specific effect, but it's going to be a video about effects in general. We are going to talk about what is VFX. Let's be honest, VFX is when you call that magician guy and you need, oh wait, wait a minute, I need the magician. My game really needs the magician, right now. So I'm here to talk to you about visual effects. What is visual effects? Well, VFX stands for visual effects, in case you didn't know, and it is also known as real-time VFX, real-time visual effects, because they need to be rendered in real time. Every time you are playing a game and you see an explosion, as long as it doesn't slow down your FPS, it's a good visual effect, because it was made specifically to be rendered in real time without impacting the performance of the game while opposite to the movie industry, where you can add the most beautiful smoke with all the details in the world and a lot of debris every time there is an explosion, because you see, everything is pre-rendered, you know? They pre-render everything and then they layer everything, they compose everything and everything becomes beautiful and you watch the movie. Well, in a game you cannot wait for the computer to render a frame, it needs to be constant and it's 60 frames, 120, 144 frames per second and everything needs to be smooth. So that's why it is called real-time VFX, because it needs to be rendered in real time. It's wonderful. Every time you see some sparks in a game, it's a visual effect. Every time you see some smoke or even some leaves dropping from a tree, those are VFX work, because that's probably a particle system that is spawning all of those leaves and give them random rotation and different, different lifetime and different movement and all of that stuff. And every time you see blood, every time you see fire, every time you see rain, even car accidents, or every time you see a character glowing or an item glowing, that's how VFX work. I mean, just look at my channel, you will probably notice <laughs> a bunch of effects, a bunch of work that a VFX artist can do. In fact, it is the most complicated art form there currently is, especially in games, because you need to have knowledge about a lot of areas, from programming, from life in general, from shaders, from drawing, you need to know to draw too straight, you need to know how to animate hand by hand or frame by frame or with bones, how to model an object as well. There's really a lot of things you need to know when it comes to VFX. That's why I've created this channel, to make your life easier as a game developer or as an aspiring VFX artist. And I hope I've helped you a lot throughout these years, or that I will help you from now on if you just discovered this channel. But basically what I'm trying to say is that VFX is complex and it is extremely important for games. And in this video I'm going to show you all about it. I mean, obviously I've created a lot of tutorials, a lot of courses, and they will explain you how to create that specific effect, but if that effect doesn't fit in a specific game, you only have learned a bunch of techniques. And that's, that's the core of the thing, the techniques. That's what you are going to use throughout your career. Techniques, a bunch of techniques, a bunch of know-hows, a bunch of workflows, and there is not one way to do a fireball, there's a bunch of ways to do a fireball. But okay, even though there's plenty of techniques and different ways to do one thing, there are a few things that are common. For example, most of the VFX artists will use a particle system to emit particles, an emitter. That particle system can emit any type of texture, which is an image, can emit any type of mesh, which is an object, 3D object, and even ribbons, which is a trail, for example, and it can emit a lot of things, in fact, actually it's crazy what a particle system can do. I mean, probably you can create a game with only particle systems, that's how crazy it is. Anyway, anyway, really, those particle systems will have definitely a few things that are very common. Lifetime, the lifetime of a particle. How much time does this particle take to die? It is a second, two seconds, ten seconds? How many of those particles are there going to be? That is a very common parameter as well, the color of that particle, the size, the rotation. 
its velocity, the speed of the velocity depends on the engine. You see, that part of theory is all the same across game engines and different uh, techniques. This also happens with a fireball. You know, those beautiful fireballs that you see in games? Well, they can be done in quite a few ways. You can decompose them in three parts. You have the head, which is the most attractive aspect of the fireball, and it uh, draws the attention of the player, because he really needs to get away from that fireball, probably. Then you have the trail, and then maybe you have some sparks flying off. So you have these three parts, yes. But then comes another artist, the guy that really likes to draw, illustrate, and create a flipbook of the wall fireball. Well, he will eventually do the same thing, which is focus on the head of the fireball, it will be brighter and beautiful and then it will leave a trail and then maybe some sparks. But it is all composed within that sprite, within that flipbook. So maybe if it is for example for a VR game, maybe that won't work as well, because on the left side you have a 3D object, half a sphere which composes the head of the fireball and the trail and whatnot, and you can see it from all of the angles. While on this side you will have the fireball rotating to the camera always. It will look very weird in a VR game, for example. That's one of the challenges we face on an everyday basis. But they have essentially the same principles, which is draw the attention of the player to the pointy part, to the head of the fireball. But you don't want to draw too much attention to the trail. That's the most important part, the head of the fireball. So in the end they fall into a few principles. And this principle that I've been mentioning is called creating a focal point which fits in the category of contrast. Having good contrast in your effect is very important. You want this to be visibly understandable. You don't want the effects that you have created to clutter the game. Having an effect with good contrast, with good visibility, it's important for the legibility of the game. Another important principle of visual effect is shapes and colors. If you want to heal someone, maybe you will add a plus sign to know that it is elf. Maybe it will be green, very likely. You see, there is a very well established communication with shapes and colors. Shapes and colors are extremely important for an aggressive projectile maybe it will be spiky maybe it will be pointy and it will be red or something like that and something really aggressive you know in the end it's all about semiotics 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 which is the language of science language of shapes so yes shapes and colors tend to communicate very well the intention of the effect Another thing you commonly do as a VFX artist is control the timings of a VFX and the motion. Timings and motion are extremely important. You want this bright flash to grow or you want this bright flash to shrink. It will create very different sensations. If it grows, it's something... It's beautiful. But if it shrinks and it starts big, it's an impact. It's like pow. It's like pow. And then it shrinks, you know? So yes, timings and motions play a very important role when creating visual effects for games. That's another principle. And well, lastly, knowing the purpose of the effect is paramount. And that is called the principle of gameplay. Otherwise, you may create a beautiful effect, but if it doesn't fit the mechanic in the game, if it doesn't highlight the mechanic, well, it's pointless. You have a beautiful effect, but if it doesn't communicate well to the player what it does, it's a little bit pointless. That's why it's very important to know the game before creating a visual effect. And that's mainly it. So are you guys ready now to create magic into this world? Are you guys ready to be a wizard? Then subscribe to this channel, check out my channel, I have plenty of tutorials about visual effects for games. I also have quite a few Udemy courses that may help you point in the right direction if you want to start in this field. So yeah, get ready and pick up your wizarding at and let's go create some magic into this world. And before finishing I just want to say thank you to each one of you, my patrons. These videos are possible thanks to you and I truly appreciate the support. And if you feel like being my patron, well, you will get plenty of visual effects that you can use in your games or you can study them up close and see how they work 
and have a little bit better understanding of visual effects. There's a huge amount of effects in my Patreon page. And lastly, a quick shout out goes to the top tier patrons, which are 3D Sorcery, Alper Arichai, Analog Up Studios, Aquilas Benitez, Aviat Tobali, Kruby Dubidu, Crazy Studio, Daniel Schmidt, Diego Marques, Duke Williams, Duitron, Effect Yellow, El Sheriff, Gilles Walter, Goblin Plague, Guilherme Trindad, James Cho, Johnny Titan, Casey Miller, Kenan Anselm, Lee and Holt, Mark Anum, Mateus Bragança, Michael Jan, Michael Leite, Michael Tello, Minazuki, Mograf Tech, Mortar, Mikola Piatkov, Nat Sims, Hodale Patrick Rochas, Oitsk, Pradeep Sen, Quentin Journo, Q, Radioactive Bullfrog, Revenant Games, Vel, Verisuta, Will Use, Will Poilion, Masaki Monge, Xing Pyong Ling, Myung Lang Son, and Ingu Das. Thank you all for your amazing support. You guys truly are amazing and I really appreciate your support. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed this new type of videos and if you want to see more. So that's it, thanks for watching and bye!